It's a cleanup job that will take a while. A group of mostly boys in their early teens and younger are busy cleaning the streets of Misrata, sweeping up the shattered glass, garbage, and sand that piled up over months of fighting. 11-year-old Salem should be in school, but there hasn't been class since the uprising began more than three months ago. Despite the heat and the dust, he, like the others, seems to take pride in his work. I want to clean up with my friends, he tells me. Local businessmen have donated uniforms, brooms, wheelbarrows, shoes and goggles. Nearby, Sadiq Saleh is busy clearing away one of the dozens of sand-filled containers that served as makeshift barricades during the fighting. Even though Qaddafi's forces are just a half hour's drive from here, he has no doubt they won't be showing up in Misrata again. It means this is the beginning of victory, Sadiq says. It's a victory when we remove the barricades. His troops are gone and they won't come back. 75-year-old Sadiq Jubran's home was hit by, among other things, a tank round. Rebel fighters took him and his family to a safer part of town, but as the fighting spread, they had to move seven times. Now he can do little but sit in his wheelchair and wonder how, on his teacher's pension of $70 a month and no savings, he'll ever be able to rebuild the house. <laughs> Where am I going to get it, he asks. I need money for medicine. For eight years since my stroke, I've had to pay from my own pocket. I never got a penny from Gaddafi. His neighbor, Abdul Hamid, is cleaning up as well, sweeping up the dust in front of his bullet-pocked house just a block away from Tripoli Street, scene of some of the most intense fighting during the siege. His family is staying with relatives. I ask him, when will they return? I don't know, he says. Living conditions aren't very good. There isn't much water, there's no electricity, and there are still landmines on the corner over there. Around the corner, residents come every evening to survey the ruins. The scenery is shocking. But here, there's no air of defeat. The tale of Misrata is one of tragedy of death and destruction on a massive scale. But it's also one of triumph, of residents of a city who, despite everything they've been through, refuse to be bowed. Ben Wiedemann, CNN, Misrata, Libya.